Good day everyone, it's a pleasure to welcome you. My name is Sizo Nasana, I'm the CEO and founder of Future Nation Schools and the Sefiso Learning Group. Uh, it really is a privilege to host you today because we want to just share with you what Future Nation Schools is all about. And with me here I've got Mam Mampo Langa, who's the head of our schools and therefore the principals of our campuses in Porto Hair and head of our preschools, Lisa Combrink. And who's also going to be talking to us about our preschools because you know they're very important, they form the foundations of what happens, especially in the first thousand days uh, of your children. But also with us here, we have uh, some of our other guests at the back here. We have a humanoid called Future, and uh, there's Future and there's a past. You can see the skeleton there at the back. Uh, so we're going to be talking about why this is important, why technology is important, especially because we are now in the 21st century. And just going on, you know, we started these schools, this is now our fourth year of operation of Future Nation Schools. It's a philosophy that's based on us being Africans, being excellent, offering the best education, preparing our young people for the 21st century, and uh, having a curriculum which is relevant, which builds the character of young people so that they are proud, they are confident, uh, they can stand on their own, they can navigate this chaotic, this hectic world in which we live, especially these days as we all experience the nationwide lockdowns and COVID-19. It's, it's important uh, that we have people who have resilience, who can, uh, you know, migrate from one area to the other, who understand the virtues of lifelong learning. That's really, really important. And that's what we do at Future Nation Schools. At the moment, we have two campuses uh, where we Recording this uh, video today is in our Flehof campus, uh, just outside of Soweto. Our other campus is in Lindest, and uh, it really is a pleasure to be able to offer, you know, our offering to you. Uh, we have preschool right up to uh, grade 11 at the moment. So in 2021, we'll be having our class of 2021, which is our first group of matrix. Uh, that are going to be writing the IEB exam, the International Examination Board. Uh, you can never have quality education without quality teachers. We'll talk a little bit about our teachers and Memlana uh, during his presenta uh, presentation. We'll talk about you know what we do in this regard. And we've already scored a number of runs on the board, and we will share with you some of the achievements that we've uh, been able to score in our very you know, short life because uh, that's really important. Just talking about the high quality education, yes, we follow the CAPS curriculum. What does that mean? Obviously, our students will write the independent examination board, the IEB exam at the end of matric. Uh, however, we take the curriculum, it is important that we map the curriculum and enhance it. And Memlam is going to talk a little bit more about that because not only do we teach the standard subjects that are required in terms of the curriculum, we've enhanced it because it is important that we have young people who can demonstrate global literacy, uh, who can demonstrate relational capabilities and competences such as communication skills, collaboration skills, creativity, as well as critical thinking and problem solving, which are really, really important in the context of the 21st century. Uh, we are in Africa after all, and therefore the way that we articulate and teach you know, is based on understanding that every subject that we have must be taught in the African context. And that's really particularly important. And whilst at the same time understand that the future is important, and therefore technology is important. That's why when you look at, you know, what we have here, we teach computing, we teach robotics, we teach leadership, we teach entrepreneurship, because we want to have job creators, not job seekers. Uh, because especially in the context of where our economy is, it is important to have people who are creating jobs or entrepreneurs as opposed to people who are going to school because they want to finish and go and look for a job afterwards. And that's particularly important for us. And the values that we have are values of passion, respect, excellence is really important in our lives, integrity, diversity, and all of these values are important. Whilst at the same time, you know, schools are places of fun. So when young people come to our schools, and when our teachers come to our schools, it is important for them to have fun. Because after all, they spend a lot of time here. So it is important to practice that. 
In the context of COVID-19, obviously with social distancing and hygiene, uh, you know, it's not always uh, possible, especially when it comes to sporting activities and so on. We've responded and we responded quite early when it comes to COVID-19 uh, by one, enabling our teachers to teach remotely, as well as uh, making sure that we are supporting learning and teaching uh, for our students at home. Obviously with the support of our parents, I would like to just thank our parents for all the support that they gave us. And they continue to give us, to give us because you know, remote learning continues for those uh, students who are not able to come to school as an example. Even though we prefer for most of our students to come to school. But you know, we understand that some of our students may have comorbidities and therefore uh, we have to be able to offer you know, streaming or online education to them whilst uh, they are at home. And uh, we are able to practice social distancing and we teach and emphasize hygiene. Uh, you know, and uh, it is important obviously that everyone who comes to our school wears masks. Uh, that's really, really important. So we will not allow anyone to come to our school, uh, uh, any of our campuses, if they are not wearing masks. And uh, we, you know, follow the regulations because uh, the health and safety of our students, our parents and our teachers is absolutely important. It's a non-negotiable for us, so that's really important for us. Uh, I'm now going to hand over to Namla, who's going to talk to us about our learning and teaching and our curriculum and so on. Thank you. Hi, good day all. Let me welcome you to Future Nation Schools to tell you more how we disrupt education or how we future-proof our students. What we do, we use a model called project-based learning. What is that? Here we're moving away from the lecturing to reading from a textbook. We are encouraging our students to inquire, to research, to discover, to investigate, and even uh, do projects. I'll give you an example. Our grade sevens are doing bacteria as we're talking right now. What their project would be, they go uh, when they went all out, took swaps of uh, bacteria in the toilet seats, handrails, uh, door handles, the floors, and all of that. They brought the bacteria into the into the lab and allowed it to grow using agar. Their uh, results came out very strange. Is that there's more bacteria in the handrails than in the bathrooms? We know now where to target, especially with this COVID-19 uh, issue. It, we do not only end with project-based learning. What we also look into is that our subjects, we don't teach them in silos. Like the very example I just gave you, that uh, they will go all out and, uh, and, 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 and investigate where bacteria is mostly co uh, concentrated. There are other subjects that would come in, because as they collect the data, there's some mathematical concepts that they need to bring together. And as they write that report, there's some English that comes in into the whole thing. So it makes the CAPS curriculum that we're using to be way better than what it is now. So we enhance our CAPS curriculum. Finally, our students are going to write an IEP exams and we are ready, we are ready to move on. Mathematics is compulsory in our school because we believe the same way as students can read, we feel they can also do mathematics. The only difference between the two is that there's preference for reading and preference for mathematics. We believe that 60% uh, is the pass average for all the subjects. By saying pass average, I mean the pass mark. It is compulsory. If you get anything less 60%, we are going to work towards that. 60% is the pass mark for all subjects. The other thing that makes us very unique are robotics and coding. This is what our grade fours put together. The, it was in pieces. They had to follow instructions to put it together. Listening skills, working collaborative. It didn't end there. What they also had to do is to ensure that it moves. That movement, programming, coding comes in. And again, as they do that, they review their decisions, they come in together, and for them even to come up with this for it to move the ball, again, some redesigning was involved, some rethinking was involved, which makes it super. The next thing that I would take you to is that we've got two campuses, the same curriculum, same assessment, everything. It might differ with the facilities that you find there, but it's beautiful to world class. Class sizes, it's very difficult to indicate our class sizes because we are a different school, we are not a traditional school. There are instances where you find that there are three teachers in the classroom with 50 students and they are busy working on the project with different subjects. So I would give you the ratios is 1 to, the minimum is 1 to 15 to 1 is to 17. 
but we will never have more than 50 and 30 students in a classroom. Languages. Our language of teaching and learning is English. English is offered as a home language. Our second language is Afrikaans, Setswana, and Sizulu. Right now, Afrikaans is only offered at high school. We offer also extra curricula. We've got the netball, soccer, rugby, oh, you name them. Uh, UN model, anything you come across. But in case where you need to pay like karate, maybe ballet, then we'll have to put in some extra amount to do that. What, what do we wear? What I'm wearing right now is our school gear, worn with a blazer, or it can be worn with tracksuit pants, or it can be a hoodie. It all depends on what the child wants to do. We don't have summer or school uniform because it allows our students to have those decision-making skills at a tender age. Uh, knocking off times, we start as early as 7.30 up to 16.30. It looks quite long. Yes, it is an extended program. Why? We try to accommodate all of the things that are in the curriculum because our curriculum is completely different. But I want to make you aware, our curriculum does not mean it's a technical school. We are not a technical school. We see a program called INSICA. INSICA is a um, student counseling program. Every student is assigned to a teacher. This is where they get time to reflect what happened over the week. This is how they get a time to talk about the problems they encountered, how can they improve their marks, or even the problems that they have socially outside the classroom. And the Nsika leader is the one who is a go-to person when parents have problems. I will now hand over to Lisa to tell you more about our preschool. Thank you, Mamanga. Um, when we talk about preschool, we have an uh, outcome-aligned national curriculum framework that we are following. Both our preschool um, in Linders and Fleof is registered preschools. Um, we have an uh, introduction into the project-based project in, uh, interactive learning where we um, are theme-based and then what we do instead of just reading to the students about certain subjects and practicing uh, life skills and numeracy and literacy, literacy, literacy skills um, in the classroom, we also extend it to outside the classroom. For instance, when the children um, are learning about plants and growth of plants, they will then have a plant that they have to nurture up to the point where it's harvest time and they'll get very excited to then um, harvest uh, uh, things like carrots, beans and, and they'll also bring them home and they'll expect you to help them cook them. Um, our students also, when it comes to early mathematics skills, they are engaging in projects such as baking where they have to measure the ingredients and they learn all about measurement and numeracy from activities such as that. Um, we have language enrichment in all our classes from very early on. The reason we have a language enrichment classes, classes is to enhance the children's vocabulary so that when they go on to um, the foundation phase, they are able to communicate and the other thing is that they are able to then also do mathematics and they would understand the, nu the numeracy concepts that, that comes with, with mathematics. We have hands-on learning as I've mentioned before. In the morning, um, we have drop-off from 7 o'clock in the morning. Our half day ends at 13.30 and our full day ends at 17.30. So we have an aftercare facility that runs from 13.30 until 15.30 and our dedicated uh, preschool team runs the facility. So it is people that are, uh, the students are acquainted with, they stay with their teachers and the little ones actually have a little extension of their day program in the afternoons. Um, we have children from grade triple R to grade R. Um, we take them from the age of about three and we introduce them to grade R. They then go to the foundation phase, which is the grade ones and they do a school readiness assessment before they enter. The reason we do the school readiness assessments is to ensure that all our students are met at the level they are performing at. So what we do is we do a basic numeracy language assessment and also look at fine and gross motor achievements, 
to ensure that we have everything developed to a level where the child could then become literate, read, write and do mathematics. Thank you, Mahal. Let's talk about uh, my favorite part, the quality of teachers we have. 60% of our, te our teachers from grade one up to high school, the minimum qualification is a junior degree, but uh, we go up to honors at master's level. Actually, 17 to 24% of our teachers have honors at master's level. We are very, very uh, uh, critical, when we are very uh, 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 strict when it comes to employment. Our teachers go through an assessment where they we have to see if they would fit in into the uh, culture of the school. But also at the same time, we have what we call a continuous professional development. This is where we meet to look at how we can uh, 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 help each other. Every teacher who is new is always assigned to what we call a critical friend. That goes is more like your mentorship program. So in that, they have a discussion how they are coping, how do they find teacher development program. You know, in, 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 in everything that we do, there's always this feedback uh, culture that we have. We always call it the soft on people, but hard on content. So when you come in, we expect you to be a type of a person who's extremely reflective. We try by all means to grow our own talent and that is why we also have, we allow internship. Internship, we have it here, those are teachers, those are teachers that come in to support our existing teachers and they get a lot of development from the experienced teachers. I'll hand over now to Mr. Masana to tell you more about our achievements. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so, obviously it's important that uh, we benchmark ourselves uh, against other operators to check whether the quality of education that we have is keeping up or even our, really our goal is to make sure that it's better than, than others. So, yes, we do assessments, for instance, John Education Trust uh, administers assessments uh, that are done on a systemic basis where we compare ourselves and our children in grade 3, 6 and 9 write the same test as the other schools, especially the other private schools. And you can see on the graph uh, that our students do particularly well, you know, particularly in areas such as English and Mathematics, which are the two subjects that are core uh, and used as a basis of measurement of how we're progressing as a chain of schools. Uh, we also understand that it's important to really prepare our young people for the world, a world that is volatile, that is uncertain, uh, that is really chaotic as we all see what is going on out there. Therefore, building resilience, uh, global literacy, uh, you know, obviously digital literacy, uh, just for our young people to know how to navigate the world, while at the same time they're building the codes, the competencies and the skills which they need, uh, especially those that uh, are important in the 21st century. We expose them to Olympiads, Mathematics and Science Olympiads, the Science Expos and so on. Uh, we expose them to the United Nations, uh, the model the United Nations, which is important to build their communication, their debate skills and so on. And they're part of the Youth Managers Forum, uh, where they develop a lot of their young uh, life skills, which are important so that they understand careers, what's out there, how you prepare yourself, uh, for the world of work, how you become an entrepreneur, all of these things are really, really important. And it's important that we're not just imparting knowledge, but also we're imparting skills and competencies that are going to stand them in good stead. Because even for teachers, uh, all of us you know, are involved in lifelong learning, and therefore we have to improve our craft, we have to learn new things, so that we can impart the same kind of skills and knowledge and competencies to our young people. So thanks very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to have you. And uh, if you have any questions, you can follow us on our social uh, media, uh, whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, but also you can visit our website, futurenationschools.com, where you can see a lot more of what we are about and what we do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.